we're live all right so today we're gonna talk about cues all right and cues are pretty common data structure uh, cues and stacks anyway and if if you if you think about some of the applications you use and uh, even some everyday situations, you'll find that there are uh, examples of queues and stacks that uh, that that you can that are grounded in everyday experiences. So the library here that we're gonna import for Python to use um, queues is this collections deck queue. And yes, it's pronounced deck. So says the Python documentation. I'm sure there are some GIF, GIF, uh, fav icon, fav icon, data, data, data people out there who probably call this a DQ. You know, no judgment, but the Python docs say it's called deck. Um, so yeah, I'm going to walk through this a bit. So thing about data structures, right, is that they are an organization of data that makes it easy for us to find certain data in a certain way, right? So if you think about a phone book, right, that's a data structure. It's organized alphabetically in ascendant order uh, from by, by last name, right? And that makes it easy for us to just say, if we're looking for uh, someone who has last name, uh, I don't know, Morrison, you're not gonna start at the front of the book or the back of the book. You're probably gonna split it down the middle and try to um, approximate like that. Or when you go to a library uh, that's organized by the Dewey Decimal System, you're not going to start at the front of the library and start searching for books from A to Z, right? That's just not how it's organized. Um, and so that's what data structures do for us, right? They say, here's your data, and you're going to think about how frequently you want to access the data and how you want to access the data. And then that organization is going to fall from those kind of uses, uh, that access pattern for the data. So let's talk about queues and stacks. Now, queue is a line, right? This is the line at the grocery store. This is the line in the canteen. Uh, this is the line or, or cafeteria. Uh, this is the line um, that you're in when you're in traffic, right? And so, or this is the line, I'll save the elevator um, example because there are a lot of uh, special cases in there. But if we were to use elevators in a disciplined way, right, then the people who are coming off first would be the last to go in, right? But that's a, that's a different uh, type of queue and that's a specialization of queues that we call um, stacks, right? So more typically, we typically we have first in, first out queue. This is your line at the canteen. This is the line at your supermarket. This is traffic. You're traveling, and if you're at the front of the line, right, you were the first to get in line, then you're also the first to get cashed out or served um, at wherever you're at. Right, so that is the first in, first out queue. And really that's what I'm going to highlight in this video. Uh, if you're ever in need of a, a stack, so I'll call this a stack. If you're ever in need of a stack, uh, just use a list, right? And the thing with the stack, so there's a little bit of orientation here that sometimes makes it hard for people to visualize. Um, the situation of, of a stack being like a stack of plates, right? When you need to do your dishes, you don't start pulling from the bottom pile if you have a pile, right? Because then you're just going to make a mess. You start from the top, 
which is it's the last plate that got added onto the stack of dishes that you pick up first when you're going to wash them, right? So a stack of dishes is a good example of a stack. And so what you're seeing here is this operation where we pretty much only add and remove items from the top of your stack, right? And so lists are a pretty good uh, way of, of to, to, if you want to use a stack, because you can add to the back of a list and pop uh, from the back of a list, pop or remove, whatever you want to call it, um, quite easily and efficiently, right? That's the point. It's efficient to do this. And this would look something like, uh, let's say these are your dishes and this is your red plate, this is your green plate, and this is your blue plate, right? Notice we were adding on to the back. Let's, let's do a proper example. So, uh, plates. And this is your plate stack, right? You could do plate stack dot append your R your red plate. You could do plate stack that appends your green plate, and you can do plate stack that appends your blue plate. Whoop. Blue plate. And so where we are adding to the end of our list here. So let's print this out. Our plate stack. So we should see RGB coming over here, right? RGB. So we add to the, the, the back of our list. Now, when we also pop off of our lists, uh, we pop from the back, right? So let's print uh, that. And we'll do two pops and then print plates stack again. And so we do two pops and we should now be taken off from the back, right? So we get rid of B, then we get rid of G and we should be on the left with R. Let's do this. See, we're left with R. Cool, so this is how you do stacks. That's it. It's no more complicated than that. Um, let's talk about the first in, first out. Uh, and still, queues, right? More generally, what we call uh, a queue, right? Uh, like I said, there are different types of queues, specializations of queues. Uh, but when someone says queue or a simple queue, they're thinking about the first thing you put in is the first thing that comes out. Now. With stacks, we had a situation where it looked as though when we were adding uh, things on to the stack, we had our stack and then we were saying you would add things on that way, but we were also taking things off from that same end, right? With queues, however, we are doing things a little bit differently. We're saying that you're adding from one end and you are removing from the other end in the same direction. Okay. Now, and I mean, it, it's, it, you could inverse this. It all depends on how, uh, you look at it, this is the same thing, right? Whatever floats your boat in terms of visuals, good uh, deal, right? Uh, so you add at one end and you take out at the other end, same thing. 
Except that with lists, if you were to do this with a list, then you would need to uh, you'd need to add or remove from the front or the back, right? But the thing with lists is that if, the, if you can efficiently add to the back of a list, like we did with the stat, you can efficiently remove from the back of a list, like we did with the stack. Now, let's say you wanted to use a list for a queue. You may efficiently add to the list, right? From this end, right? But taking from the front of a list is expensive. And here's why. Because if you have a list of one, two, three, dot, 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 uh, one million, right? Then if you take off the front of the list, let's say you want to get rid of one, right? You want to get rid of one. Then notice how those numbers moved over. That's gonna happen a million minus one times. And if you need to remove a lot of stuff from a large queue, then that doesn't make sense. Right? That's gonna be expensive. So we need a data structure. Like I, like I said, it starting data structures are these organizations of your data that allow you to access your data efficiently in a certain way. Right. And so we need a special uh, data structure that's implemented to make it easy for us to add to one end of a of it and remove from another end and do both of them efficiently if we're going to do a, a first in first out, out uh, queue. All right. And then there are priority queues, which I won't talk too much about but essentially there are there are cues that self-organize based on some property right so an example of a priority queue may be the i don't know let's say you're, you're at a, a doctor's office and in the waiting room they have this uh rule that says we'll serve seniors first right or among walk-ins, we'll always serve uh, seniors first. That's a priority queue, right? There's some uh, order in that that's happening inside there that determines who uh, gets served first, aka okay, who gets uh, removed from the queue uh, first. Right? And for this in Python, if you're ever looking for uh, something like that, then I think there's something like a heap queue library, I believe. Yes, there, there's a there's a heap cube library. So maybe it's just called heap. I don't know. Yes, it's heap cube. All right. So a there are two libraries that I see people use for queues in Python. One is this deck and the other is uh, Q, it's called Q. And the thing is that I feel like for a lot of the implementations I've seen where Q, the Q library is being used, it's overkill, right? Say you need to implement a breadth first search algorithm, uh, you may use the Q library. That's not going to cause you any harm necessarily, right? You're not really gonna do much. Right. You have an interview, you know the Q library, use it. The thing with it though is that it's overkill because there are all these uh, mechanisms built into it around locking and synchronization that are meant for when you're doing multi-threaded programming. And usually, you know, if you're doing interviews, you're doing an assignment um, that doesn't involve multi-threading and that's overkill. And so what DEC does for us is that it gives us a, a, a data structure that uses the same kind of interface as a list, right? So it's very easy to pick up. Unlike the queue data structure, which is a little bit different, right? It's it's more object oriented it, traditionally in terms of its 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 style, 
right? You have this empty method on there. Uh, you know, you have this pull and put and get methods. While for this, this the deck just kind of blends into Python as if you were using a list. And the only thing that differs uh, is, is really how it's constructed, right? If you were to um, create a deck, then an empty deck, then you do uh, something like this, right? Now, if you were to create a list, you would do something like this, or you may do something like this, right? Notice the uniformity here. This is nice, okay? And the, the ways of accessing things are the same as well, right? If you were to convert an existing collection to a, to a dict, then you would do, you know, let's say uh, this is a deck of um, cards. Why not play on words? Right. And if we already have a list of cards, let's say the eight of spades, let's say we have the uh, king of hearts, let's say we have the queen uh, diamond, and we wanted to turn this into a Q, then we would just do And this is very similar to how you would convert other uh, collections into other collections, right? If you look at the set basics video that I did, uh, this is very similar to how we constructed sets from other uh, data structures like lists or tuples, right? So that's how we would uh, do that. Also with a dick, we have the append method on here. So let's continue with our double. Okay, and, and I forgot to mention this, but uh, deck here stands for double ended Q, right? It's actually D E Q, uh, double ended Q. And I misspelled this. Okay. All right, so let's say we wanted to add. And we we add in when we do append, we add in this direction. We add in this direction, just as if we were doing it with a list. It's the same append method, which is fantastic, right? Love the consistency, love the uniformity. So if we wanted to add to our deck of cards, then we would do append, and let's say the seven of hearts just append that on there right before we do this append uh right we can also append to the other side of the queue right the front so if we wanted to do a deck of cards then we can append to the left right the six diamond right and this is doing an append this direction so you can already see that we're getting the flexibility to do both of these and it's left up to us how we want to think about the the the, the flow of where we put stuff in and how we put or how we take stuff off, right? You decide. It's up to you. That's what flexibility is for. The same thing goes for pop, right? So if we want to do the and let's just uh, print our deck of cards here. Right, there we go. We have a deck. Remember, we appended seven of hearts on and we appended left six diamond, right? We can also pop from both ends. That's why it's a double ended queue. So let's do our deck of cards that pop uh, our seven of hearts, right? We're gonna remove our seven of hearts and we are going to 
the deck of cards uh the pop left right uh which will remove our six diamond and print uh our deck of cards just to see there we go we're back to our initial eight spades king of hearts and uh queen diamond uh now we can peek at items too right sometimes we want to look at what's at the edge edges of our or or queue you know the left the right the front the back the rear the 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 the, the front whatever you want to call them right um and we can do that using the same index in uh techniques we use for lists and tuples it's wonderful <laughs> Uh, so let's say we want to look at the front, let's call this the left of our uh, our deck. This should show us our eight spades. And let's say we want to look at the uh, right of our last thing in there, right? The queen, the queen diamond. Uh, then we just access it like we would a list. And yes, it also works that you can use any of the numbers in between. Let's say you wanna access the, the, the King of Hearts here. You could do deck of cards and index it at one and you will get the King of Hearts just like you would a list. Thing is though, that with flexibility, you have to maintain the discipline, right? So if you're using this as a cue, you're not necessarily gonna look at the middle of of your queue necessary usually you're concerned with the edges of the queue right so let's 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 look at that there we go eight of spades to the left queen of diamond to the right and uh we can also insert items in any position like we would in a list again with flexibility <laughs> flexibility gives you the power to properly uh, uh, enforce whatever discipline you want in this so uh, actually I'm not even going to cover this and I had an example about counting the uh, the items that are inside the the queue and I'm not going to even uh, consider that I'm not even going to show that because what I really want to convey here is that the queue with the queue, you're extreme, you're you're concerned about the extremes of the data structure, right? You're concerned with the front and the back for the most part. There's special situations, very special situations, where you may want to do some of this um, extra stuff where you want to you know, hack your queue. You know, maybe you wanna. <laughs> I remember when I was going to school, and I was in the canteen, um, or any event really. There would be, and there would be a line for whatever. We had this thing where, you know, if you're in line, if your friend is in line, then it means that you can be in line too. And we would do this thing where we'd call it a front skip, and so <laughs> you would pretty much walk up to your friend and say, "Hey, friend." I need to get some food. Can you give me a skip? And you'd step in front of your friend. And for some reason, that was okay. You know? Now, a back skip was a sin. No, uh-uh. You couldn't do that because then you were skipping the person who were behind you. High school logic. <laughs> All right. Um, so that is uh, the Q and the very convenient double-ended Q deck uh library here module that we can that we can use where does this come up uh this comes up in all sorts of places right um like i said again you probably want to use the q library uh if you're going to do multi-threaded uh, uh applications because that has the lock-in mechanisms built into it deck i don't believe uh has that um Let's look at this documentation here. Deck is an alternative implementation of unbounded queues with fast atomic append and pop left operations that do not require lock-in, right? And it also supports indexing. And we showed um, that here as well. 
So if you're gonna do multi-threaded stuff, go for the Q library. If you just want to implement something like a breath first search uh, algorithm and you need a Q and it's an interview or an assignment or um, you know something relatively simple that doesn't involve lo locking mechanisms, then this is probably what you want to use. All right, that is a wrap. We am calling it there. So like, subscribe, do the things that YouTube people do. All right, peace. Thanks for watching.